How about there? Can you hear me now? I'm gonna wait a second to see if I can hear my uh, self talk. You know what? There should be sound. Now I gotta redo the whole thing. Welcome to the uh, AM Hookah Podcast Technical Difficulties Friday show. I know, I know I'm late. I already said all this stuff, but I don't think any of you could hear me talking. So I am going to... Yeah, Rami, I know. You should be able to hear me now. There's a 10-second delay from when I see the comments. So if you can hear me talking here... Uh, Rose of Death, thumbs up, sweet. This is the... Uh, this was originally supposed to be at 8. We rescheduled it for 4. Then I rescheduled it for 8. Originally, I wanted to do it at 8 in the first place, but there was a little worry that I wouldn't be able to, and that didn't happen because of a miscommunication. We're here late, and I do apologize. But we're here now, and if any of you caught this week's episode of the AM Hookah Podcast, you're going to know that Matt and I had a conversation about packing stuff. And he said, hey, Adrian, you need to do a pack method on Tangiers. So we're going to be packing some horchata into this alien flashback bowl. This is a bowl I just picked up. I'm a very big fan of it. Then we're going to hang out, smoke, maybe do a little bit of Q&A. Maybe I'll cue your A. It's completely up to you guys. And um, real quick, I might do it in a weird format when I actually start packing. I might do a second intro because this video is probably going to go up at, under Pipe Dream Hookah as well. Because I saw that Rami was here and this is actually a tobacco that was sent by Rami from High Desert Smoke, Yucca Valley, California. And um, in appreciation of that, I did want to share a pack method for Tangiers because last week I uploaded my very first Tangiers video. That said, let's go ahead and see if I can't introduce the, uh, the pack cam, which is going to be right here we got the pack cam we got the regular cam get it um so like i said we're gonna be packing horchata and here are the needed materials really quick everyone i want to see what you're smoking drop it in the comments so i can talk about it um maybe i'm gonna be going through some pictures by the way and posting some of your sweet hookah porn on instagram as the am hookah podcast so um you know Make sure to go through in the next week and tag that stuff because that's going to be happening really soon. But in the interest of um, you guys seeing what matters the most, we're going to get started with our pack. However, I do need to like move myself from here like up into this corner and uh, we can carry in. So today, like I said, we're going to be doing some, hor some horchata. Tangiers, very good flavor. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, horchata flavors because cinnamon flavors have been kind of eh for me. Um, I don't know what the deal is, but they're not bad. And then we've got the alien, the, uh, what is this? Do we get bowls on this show? No, this is going to be the last Adrian Hunter hosted show that doesn't include bowls because Matt is going to be schooling me on how to run the bowl system, hopefully over the weekend. That, that would be ideal. Um, and then we've got nothing right now, but I'm ready for that cactus blast. Hell, yeah, Gus. Um, like I was saying, Alien Bowl flashback. And let's go over some required materials. Normally I'd have a pack mat. Foil is one of the required materials. You guys already know that. Normally I'd have a pack mat, but packing Tangiers is so easy and intuitive that we're going to be able to do it with the bowl and the horchata. And for anyone who's still not fully understanding exactly how to pack Tangiers, you're going to see how easy it is. Most of you guys probably know how to pack Tangiers, in which case you'll get to see a little bit about my preferences and stuff. Um, that said, I'm going to close this really quick. And do something really weird that's going to seem very strange to you guys. So just bear with me for like a moment. And uh, y I promise this will make sense in a moment. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Pipe Dream Hookah. Adrian Hunter here, your normal host. And today, in addition to Pipe Dream Hookah, we are live on technical difficulties. And I'm doing a live on how to pack my way to pack Tangiers. Um, the bowl isn't important, but for reference sake, we're using an alien bowl, the alien flashback bowl. And, uh, I don't want to get too, too much dialogue because I don't want to hold these people that are watching me live up. Good people. Always come to check out the show. Switch. And, uh, let's just get into it. So like I was saying earlier, we need the tobacco bowl. We got some foil. We got a fork. I think forks are pretty necessary if you're going to be packing yourself some tangiers. And then we've got the, uh... We got the poker. And let me just, uh, are we still blasting music? Okay, good. I was afraid we were blasting music still for a second. So it's this simple, you guys. Crack the pack. 
First thing you gotta do, obligatory, every Tangier's flavor, you gotta give it a sniff. <sighs> Horchata smells so good. We got Robert Pope smoking Boboro Three Apples, that backer. It's pretty good stuff from what I've heard. This is very simple. I'm gonna adjust myself so you can kind of see what's going on here. Back it up. So first thing you're gonna do, obviously, is mix your tobacco up a little bit. That's pretty important. And you're gonna wanna get the bulk of your tobacco on the one side, little, just one side of the container. Now we're gonna fill the bowl using the fork. There's a few ways you can do this. Here's how I like to do it. We'll just go around, fill her up, get it nice and dense, and we're gonna dent it down like this. So for those of you who didn't see it, it's not very complicated. You know, grab some, make sure, the trick is to make sure your tobacco is as dense as it can be in the bowl without all of the juices starting to escape. You can do this entire pack without touching the tobacco. If you're a perfectionist, you're probably gonna wanna touch the tobacco at some point. Me, I am not gonna be touching the tobacco just to show you that this is something that you can do without actually touching your tobacco, barely at all. Might have to like wipe some off of the bowl or something, but I've brought paper towel for that purpose. So you'll see what I'm doing here. It's kind of running my fork to scrape off excess tobacco. And because the fork is riding from the spire of the bowl to the rim of the bowl, you will probably notice that it's not actually densing the tobacco up down to like some insane hellish depth or density. But what it's doing is it's taking all the stragglers from the top of the bowl and kind of just letting them fall off the side. Do that a little bit more. And I'm gonna do a little visual test. Looks pretty good. So here's, here's the next thing I'm gonna do. And there's a billion ways to pack tangiers. As long as you get it dense, you're gonna be fine. Here's my next step. I like to take, so you see your fork here. It's kind of got an arch. The bowl has an arch between the spire and the rim. So what we like to do at this point, what I like to do at this point, is kind of let the fork do the talking and just let that arch of the fork slide down, bring the tobacco down to a nice density. And now I'm gonna take a peek. Got glasses on. I was gonna take them off, take them off but I decided I'm just going to commit to the character. And this is going to smoke pretty well. Now what I want to tell you is you want to get everything off the rim. And then you're going to want to go ahead and use your thumb if you want it to look even. It does not, this does not need to happen. I like, to, I like presentation and I'm doing a live here. In addition to a Pi Dream Hookah video. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then you guys will see how well this turned out as soon as I grab my one piece of paper towel. Whip it off and real quick, just in case I didn't say hello to everybody. We've got Gustav, Robert, Capstar69, Raul, Rose of Death, Rami, Justin Young, and I think that's everyone I see on my screen at the time. So the next thing we're going to do, very simple, low-tech stuff, is we're going to take this paper towel and we're going to use it to get any of the tobacco that may have fallen to the wayside onto the rim of the bowl and we're going to push that back in to the bowl. And then we're going to take this spire and we're going to do the same thing there. And now cover your ears because I may have to scream. Cole should have been in my room already. We're going to find out if they were. Yo, God, you got them coals? Hopefully them coals will show up in just a moment. Perfect. So everything we just did was aesthetic, but here is the final result. We have a bowl that's nice, flat between the rim and the spire of the bowl. It's going to smoke beautifully. Next up, we're going to... We got some bowls. I'm going to set them on the floor because that's actually a really bad idea. We're going to set them up here. Caught you high as fuck. No, no, we don't, we don't smoke any now legal substances before doing podcast work because to be quite honest i think it makes for poor content if <sighs> i can be honest okay so we're going to clean this fork off because the fork's done its job and it's important to clean as you go so now we can go ahead and clean the fork put the horchata back together put that away grab ourselves some aluminum foil would you use the foil to press it down more that is kind of old tech um people still do it and you know travis i think it works pretty well um, 
I think you're going to get a burning flavor at the beginning of your session when you do that because a lot of the molasses, for those of you who don't know, Tangiers is not a dark leaf. Tangiers is a blonde on wash tobacco using molasses as a binding agent. And what this does is it gives you this flavor. Molasses burns with a very specific flavor, especially the molasses that Tangiers uses. When you have molasses just kind of hanging out on the, uh, the foil itself, I find it will burn. Some people may like that particular brand of burnt tobacco flavor. Um, if you smoke Tangiers, you probably can respect a little bit of burnt flavor. Um, I know I do. And it's not really burnt. It's just kind of like a slightly um, overheat. I don't know how to explain it. I like a little bit of throat tickle. But it becomes too much for me when I get molasses on the, uh, on the foil. So instead, I'm going to go for a straight up, right out of the gate, drum tight foil. Because I've already used my thumb to dent it down to where I wanted it. And that was purely aesthetic. If you do what I just did with the fork, where you kind of fill the bowl with tobacco immediately, kind of use the fork to grind the tobacco down into the bowl, away from the spire, and then use your fork to knock off anything on the edges, you can go ahead and clean up just the sides with a paper towel and foil it. I just like to do a little bit of detail work so the inside looks pretty, because I pack a lot of bowls, and I think the aesthetic of a hookah is as important as anything else. So nice and drum tight, just so you guys can see. And we're going to just work our way in. We don't want any looseness in the foil. Kenneth, what's up, buddy? Oh, tell tell Maggie I'll uh, text her real quick after this this thing. I know that I may be doing some business with you guys. Um, so here we got the foil. Look at how drum tight that is. Hey, Matt, just a little word to the wise. When you're drum tighting your foil live, this, this is what you want it to look like. Not like what he always has to look like. I'm just kidding. Matt's bowls are actually probably fantastic. Honestly, no shade. Um, holes for Tangiers. Matt did a technical difficulty saying, asking the question, does it matter? I think it does. Tangiers is packed very dense. This is to protect the tobacco from overheating with a bunch of hot air pockets moving down through the tobacco. But I think that little fine holes going down through the tobacco, nice and deep, is going to cause it to kind of breathe a little bit better. It'll still have that density, but you'll have more surface area where heat is kind of directly interacting with the leaves. So you don't have this like super hot top layer and the bottom remains uncooked. You don't want that at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to start poking holes. And this is kind of, poking holes on camera is always so awkward. But the outside brim, since this is one of those bowls with like, on the edge, you've got, um, we're at, this is the camera, you got like this much space. And then as you go, it widens up towards the spire because of the shape of the bowl, it's kind of a triangle. So what we'll do is on the outside, we're gonna poke these itty bitty holes that probably aren't even going to touch the tobacco. Why? Because if we go all the way down, our needle at the tip of our poker is going to slide down the wall of the bowl is going to get underneath the tobacco and lift the tobacco up and let it touch the foil. There's no reason to do that. So we're gonna have something that looks like this. It's gonna leave the tobacco on tamper with while opening up airflow. The second row of holes, and we're gonna do holes all the way around the bowl. So until we're at the center, is gonna be a little bit deeper, still only going down until it touches the bowl, but it's gonna see a little bit of black on the tip here maybe. Um, it doesn't translate very well, but it, it's going to have some molasses from actually going into tobacco. And then in the third ring, we're really going to start to see maybe some molasses collecting on the holes themselves because our needle is able to go quite a bit deeper. And then we're going to keep going in a spiral motion until we get to the very center of the bowl. This will allow the bowl to breathe. It'll allow tons of airflow. And it'll stop it from overheating because there's not going to be very much of a heat trap. We are going to be using a Provost today for those of you who are wondering. I know you'll get with me. Maggie, I will. I apologize. I've been crazy busy today. Um, initially, the reason I thought I wasn't going to be able to do this at 8, which is a better time than 4, because I'm in Michigan, so 4 for you Californians would be 1. You're right in the middle of your work shift, um, which I know would be just not ideal. Um, but something came up. It looked like I wasn't going to be able to do it, but I still wanted to try. I was able to move stuff around and do it at 8. And because of my poor communication skill, I shouldn't say I have poor communication, communication skills, I have sometimes the inability, the, uh, I forget that people can't read my mind, and that's a problem I have. But So sorry, Matt. Thank you guys so much for spreading the word on when the podcast was. We're just wiping the top of the bowl down. That Our holes should look something like that. Nothing massive, but when you... Plenty of airflow. This is not going to be a problem. Um, next thing is next. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a provost. Set the provost down, and we're going to go with... I have a provost tutorial for anyone wondering. Um, we're going to go with the most opened variation of provost heat management which is going to be i need bigger tongs than these pieces of shit let's grab this right here they should be good 
what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these Prestige Coco Cubes. We're using cubes because I'm out of flats. Um, Edmund, get at me. Let's get some more sponsor coal out here. Just kidding. These guys are very good to us. Um, I just forgot to get with Edmund to get some more. Um, buy Prestige, by the way, really quick. I just want to plug this. I don't even think we need to on technical difficulties, but I really enjoy Prestige so much, and Edmund has agreed to get with us and do the sponsorship. This is a good product. I'm a firm believer in it. I'm using the Prestige uh, cubes today. I'm a bigger fan of the Jumbo Flats if you want my unbiased opinion. The Jumbo Flats are probably my favorite flat in the market right now. And um, there, there's some other good ones. I'm not going to name them because I'm in the middle of a plug. But when we talk about coals, we do talk about other coals sometimes. And um, Edmund's very cool with that because he knows his product sells itself. And we don't need to not talk about any other coal because the industry and the community is smart. You guys know what you're buying. And, um, you know... He understands that you guys are going to make your own purchasing decisions. But if you want to support a good community member, a good company, um, try out Prestige if you haven't. That's honest. Like That's not even... We are sponsored, but that's a from the heart plug, if that makes sense. Back to being me. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the Provost, and we're going to balance it on the leaf. And I actually put this coal the wrong way. We're going to have to do this, because this coal kind of chipped. We're going to balance it between the leaf and the third coal, which is going to look something... Like, get on there all the way. Come on, you can do it. There we go. It's going to look something like that. Where the provost is kind of balancing on the coal and the leaf, letting a lot of heat out, but still heating the surface of the tobacco enough where you're going to get a good smoke session. Really quick, I'm going to transition out of this so you can see my big fat face. And we're going to smoke a hookah. We've packed the bowl. This is Tangiers. This took four times as long as it should. By the way, for the Pipe Dream Hookah portion of this video, you guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, happy smoking. Anyway, back to us cool kids who are still in the live stream. Um, we're going to put this bowl in a hookah. So let's lift this bowl up because I wouldn't want anything to happen. And we're going to be a little messy today because this is... Honestly, it's just a messy pro pro process. We're going to go grab our matte pair. Ooh, you can see me. Haha. <laughs> Don't look at my ass. That would be inappropriate. We're going to put this here. And we're going to put this here. And something I like to do with Tangiers, I don't know that every, oops, person who smokes Tangiers does this, but I like to let my Tangiers sit and cook for a few minutes before taking my first draw. This is preference, you do not need to do this. Um, so now that we've got the hookah set up, and all you're really looking at is my crotch region, we can go ahead and probably get rid of my crotch region, right? Yeah. So, still at work. Will you pack me a bowl for when I'm off? Absolutely. Are you anywhere near me? Um, Rose of Death. Looks simple enough. Even a newbie like me can do Tangiers. When I this brand, when I get this brand, I'll have to try this style out. I definitely would recommend it. It's how I learn. And um, there's some stuff you can do with your hands, but I would recommend getting a hold of an oyster fork and just doing it that way at first. It actually works very well. It's very intuitive. It's not going to be an issue. Your, your session's going to go very well. No bullshit. Um, I'm really eager to pull off of this. Hey, can you guys entertain yourselves for like, I don't know, like a few seconds. I'm gonna go grab myself a, a beverage. I was gonna get a LaCroix. All we have in the house for LaCroix right now is um, tangerine, which is a poor, it's a garbage tier LaCroix. I'm gonna go grab a Dr. Pepper because <laughs> I'm one. I'm a thick boy. No worries, you're in Southern California. Yeah, I'm in Southern Michigan. <laughs> it's, I wanna trade places with you right now. If you guys could, let me just pop that there, just like that. You can hang out with uh, this guy. I don't know what his deal is. I'll be right back.
Yeah, Dr. Pepper. This. You better not have been talking to him while I was gone, man. No, I know. He cannot hear you. He can hear me, so I sound like a crazy person. Yeah, we're not going to worry about that right now. Why don't you get the fuck out? Shut your mouth. Hi, everybody. I'm back. So I think I've been gone for long enough to try to pull... This is a mess. On this hookah. I'm going to cleanse, quote-unquote cleanse, my palate with some delicious... I'm not supposed to show my eyes, but I'm going to. The pipe dream part's over. I'm done playing that character. Um, that's a little dry. Kind of moisten it up. It is going to get warmer, Gus. We deal with some shitty weather, but here's the thing. We're close enough where you've seen the weather is improving, thankfully. If it wasn't, I would probably consider honestly moving. But the weather has been slowly improving, and we're at the end. We're at the tail end. We're probably going to get blasted with one more dumb snow, because that's what Michigan does in March every time. And then um, we're going to get our six months of what I believe is honestly the best weather in the country. Michigan, during the spring and summer months, is fuck California, fuck Florida. Michigan is the place to be. Um, did we shatter pants? That's up to you, buddy. My favorite Tangiers is foreplay on the beach. Foreplay on the peach is delicious. Try it with K-Peach and cane mint. Um, so what's everyone's flavor? Tangiers flavor. K-Peach. Cashmere. Peach. Uh, Rami, I'm sorry bulls are not on right now. Um, I, I will be doing them on the next one that I host. Matt has to teach me. I just packed this bowl. You guys are probably wondering. You guys are probably thinking to yourselves, okay, he packed a bowl. Big fucking deal. Does it smoke? I don't know. Probably not. We're going to try to smoke it. First puff. <sighs> Honesty time. My first puff of tan juice usually gets to me. Um, there's something about that first rip. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's what it's supposed to feel like. And then I get used to it. So if anyone is wondering why I'm about to have like a half orgasm, half like I'm going to pass out and die in the middle of this live. Technical difficulties by AM Hookah. Um, that's why. Southern Ohio hitting 60s next week. Rose, we're going to be just fine. I mean, we're separated, but our weather is close. We're close enough where our weather is similar, I think. I'm in Detroit. You're in Southern Ohio. So it's like Columbus. What is in Southern Ohio? Is that Columbus? Is that what's down there? I've got no clue. I'm, I've am i never lived in Ohio. Grapefruit. Maggie with grapefruit. I'm assuming Maggie. If you're answering the Tangier flavor, my question to you is it pink grapefruit or just regular tang grapefruit? Let's take a hit. Oh, man. This purge. So I did a bad thing and smoked my hookah way too much over the past 24 hours. And I didn't wash it since 24 hours ago. Which means, obviously, that I dropped the ball bearing into my lap. And it is a bit moist. So the ball, the purge did lock. This is not a mat pair problem. This is a, this is a sanitation problem. Here we go. Cincinnati. That's it. Yeah, I played. Um, I, I play. I used to play Magic cards competitively. We were in Cincinnati at their uh, Expo Center for an event. Cincinnati is actually a nice city when it, when the weather's nice. At least I thought it was. I live in Detroit, so that there's your <sighs> contrast. Let's try this. It did get to me. I'm not gonna lie. I had to hold back a face. This, the cinnamon in the horchata is so sharp. There's like this almost a nutmeg flavor in there. And like you really get that sensation of like a, uh, it, it's almost ricey, which is really hard to explain. But I'm going to sit here and get this going and then I'll talk about the flavor a little bit for those of you who might want to know about... Um, Horchata. Hey, what if I did like a full review on Tangier's Horchata right now live and then used the post edit um, and uploaded it onto my channel? Would you guys be down for that? Would you guys be down to watch a quick 10 minute, it'd probably be more like seven, seven minute live review? If you would, just uh, say yes in chat. And if you're opposed, say no. And if there's no one says anything, I'm going to do it. Grapefruit is my go-to with any brand. Don't care if it's pink. See, that's pink grapefruit and grapefruit are two totally different flavors. Um, grapefruit is this really kind of a heavy, bitter citrus flavor. Pink grapefruit is ruby red squirt. So, that's interesting. Yeah. Do it.
Okay, we're going to do it, but I'm going to smoke on this for a minute because as if you see my channel, you know my cloud takes are typically weak in the cloud section, and then they open up for the flavor section because I'm in such a rush to get it recorded so I can edit it, edit it, it that um, it's an issue. What's your favorite shawarma place in Michigan? I live right next to Dearborn Rami, which is, you know, big Middle Eastern population, and those fuckers can make shawarmas. Um, there's a lot of really nice places, but there's this spot called the Golden Bakery. It's right off of Warren. You may even know where it is. It's off of Warren and Chase. And I used to go there for cheese bread and za'atar bread in the morning. Very good. Very, very good. And um, their fucking shawarma, their chicken shawarma, is incredible. Like, I am blown away. I think my, my roommate likes shawarmas, and he uh, he has enjoyed a shawarma from the Golden Bakery. We got some spots that might do it a little better, but it's also, um, what's the best word for it? It's uh, nostalgia. I used to eat there when I was a kid, so I'm, I'm super into it. If you're here, um, definitely come try it out. Hey, if you're ever in Dearborn, hit me up. We should go get some shawarmas or whatever kind of food you like. You got a sweet tooth. We got Shatila here, which is just an amazing bakery with fucking French and Lebanese sweets. It's very good. That's what's so nice about living in Dearborn. The Middle Eastern culture, it's kind of weird. I'm going to get soapbox. Not even soapbox. Just like tell you about my past. I'm a white guy. And in Dearborn, when I went to school in Dearborn, it meant I was very much a minority. It was me and like four other white kids that went to this this high school that was primarily, you know, Lebanese, Iraqi, a lot of Middle Eastern cultured um, students. And, you know, the, the, being the subject of racism as a white person is like a weird thing because I know that's not typical and it's not really an issue. But um, it really flipped. You know, at first it was like kids being kids. And then it became, like, so cool to be in such, like, because I had, like, my family and stuff were all Caucasian, super basic white people. And you have this, like, contrast of, like, a really nice, rich culture here in Dearborn. And I really have appreciated it. It's a big reason I smoke hookah, actually. So, fucking living here is great. Anyway, is that meetup still in the works? I, I believe it is. In fact, I think I shafted you on a text, Gus. I've been, like, the amount of busy I have been has not been okay. It's, I'm not cool with it. No one in my life is cool with it. I'm going to take a hit out of this, and we're going to do the uh, the review. Rami, do let me know if you're in Dearborn. That would be lit if we could go get some food and shit. I don't know if you uh, come out here at all. Um, there's a lot of travel into Dearborn for whatever reason. It might be like family or holiday or I don't know what it is, but we do have a lot of travel here. So, on the off chance. All right. Let me, is there water in this hose? There was. All right, who's ready for a Pipe Dream hookah review? Yeah, those clouds will suffice. By the way, the flavor's incredible. You're going to get a full review. Okay, everybody, make sure you're looking, because I'm going to do a review now. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Adrian, from over here at Pipe Dream hookah. But wait. It's not just Adrian from Pipe Dream Hookah. This is going to be an unedited video because I'm also live on the Aim Hookah podcast doing our show Technical Difficulties, which is just so all about some of the technical difficulties that may come up in your day-to-day -day hookah smoking and how you might go about solving those. And today I'm going over the Tangiers Pack. You may have seen another video already uploaded that was from this exact episode where we packed Tangiers. And that big type F in chat to pay respect to everyone that's in this chat currently that I can't interact with because I'm actually cutting a review. Today we're going to be reviewing Tangiers. Um, normally I keep the tobacco on me to show it because I do a scent profile thing. Horchata. As usual, if you're on Pipe Dream Puka, we're going to be reviewing this flavor based on the scent, flavor, and cloud output of the tobacco, as well as a few other things that go into how this tobacco performs. And as per usual, we are going to start with the scent of the tobacco. <sighs> Have you ever had horchata? Horchata, I believe it's like a somewhere in the uh, southern, like South America, I think, central, I'm not sure. I think it is Mexican, but I don't want to sound incredibly racist for not knowing where horchata is from. But it's, it's kind of like a uh, cinnamon milk rice concoction, kind of a desserty drink. A lot of the time it is mixed with some type of alcohol, I believe. But don't quote me. I just know the flavor profile is very similar from the few times that I have had it. And it smells like cinnamon dessert all wrapped up. I want to say you can smell rice, but that is more than likely some type of a placebo effect because I know that they use rice and horchata. And it is vaguely milky. It's a good scent. It's kind of sharp in the cinnamon. Hits you right at the back of your nose where it kind of curves down into your throat. Like it's sharp and you know the flavor is going to be very, very good. So with the scent out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the clouds. Um, you guys know how clouds work. I'm going to blow clouds and then you'll be like, oh, they're so big. And then we're going to go ahead and do a, um, 
what would you call it? Flavor analysis. I'm not gonna edit this video, so you're gonna see me inhale and exhale with no cuts in between. This, this is just the production quality of this channel is going straight down the shitter. Clouds aren't bad. Tangiers will normally yield you bigger clouds, but I probably should have done is like rearrange my coals. They're more than likely blacking out underneath the provost. The heat's a little lower than I normally like it. I'm not going to make that change because I am live, like I said, and I want to go through more of the session. By the way, you're not going to see this whole thing because after I'm done, I'm going to keep talking to the chat over here in technical difficulties. Go us. Clouds are good. Let's go ahead and move on to the flavor. We're going to start with the inhale, check out the different profiles that pop up in the inhale. Then we'll do the exhale and see the different flavor profiles that pop up there. And then we'll go to the, towards the end of the video where we talk about other stuff. Inhale first. It's mostly cinnamon. Most of the flavor you get on the inhale is the cinnamon flavor. It's not overbearing like the alfaca cinnamon. It's not overly sweet. It's like a powdered cinnamon. A little bit of sugar. It is a horchata flavor. And you do get some of that sweetness that's attributed to it, a horchata drink, or in this case, tobacco flavor. And um, it is a bit milky, but this is probably just because it does such a good job at nailing that horchata flavor profile that if you've ever had horchata, your brain's going, okay, there's supposed to be milk in here, and it's probably filling in some of the gaps. It's likely a cinnamony, nutmeggy flavor, and there is a little bit of nutmeg, I believe, but nutmeg is a weird flavor profile when it's mixed in with cinnamon, so it's hard to say whether it's like just cinnamon sugar or nutmeg as well. I'm going to say it's a sharp cinnamon, bit of nutmeg, nice, sweet, milky creaminess on the inhale. Most of that flavor is going to hit you on the back of your tongue, a little bit up on your uh, hard palate. Uh, again, you're not supposed to be able to taste there, I don't think. I'm mutated. Let's go to the exhale. <clears throat> and really, really quick, I'm going to interact with chat for just a moment because, Rami, I'll see you in Vegas for sure, buddy. It's going to be so much fun in Vegas. Hey, Pipe Dream fan people, <laughs> you see that review on the Vest Hookah off Amazon? <laughs> Go look at that. Link in the description. But um, come to Vegas. It's going to be awesome. Hookah John throws the best expo in America. It revolves around hookah. Let's check out the flavor profile on the exhale. On the exhale, it really kind of coats the inside of your mouth with that cinnamon, and it's much less sharp on the exhale. It's still not sickening sweet like Alfacher cinnamon, but it's kind of a powdered cinnamon still. Mostly the flavor profile remains unchanged. It dims down a little bit, cools off, and leaves this feeling as if you just took a drink of a horchata and had that nice moisture in your mouth. It's, it's really a pleasant flavor profile for anyone wondering. Moving on to a few other things about Tangiers. If you don't know how to pack Tangiers, I do a pack method. It was actually recorded in the same video you're watching right now, link in the description. Except for you guys watching this live right now, in which case, you already saw it. Welcome to the AIM Hookah Podcast. Um, as far as how long does it take heat, this is Tangiers. This is an alien bowl. By the way, the setup is a matte pair with an alien flashback provost on top. Three prestige regular cubes, because that's a sponsor of the AIM Hookah Podcast. Buy them. Link in the description. There's so many links in the description. And, um... It's going to take heat. This is probably go two rounds of these cubes, if I'm being honest. It's, it, it burns for a long time. It takes heat as long as you pack it correctly. If you don't pack it correctly, you're going to be punished. If you don't know about Tangiers, again, I'd recommend looking at some other videos. But the, the Cliff Snows are Tangiers can be very dangerous if you don't pack it correctly. It can hit you. There's a lot of nicotine. It's unwashed. It's binded with molasses. So all of those things keep them in mind. But it takes heat for a long time. It, it, it burns for a long time. And the flavor's great, the scent's great, the clouds are always good, the head buzz is there if you haven't eaten. I haven't eaten. And um, all in all, I'm going to have to give this flavor a solid 6 out of 7. It hits all the points for me. I'm not partial to cinnamon flavors, and I like this one, so that should say something. And to top it all off, um, it's Tangiers. I mean, how low can Tangiers get, right? 
The reason it's not going to be a 7 is because I reserve 7s for heavily biased opinions. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, happy smoking. Anyway, where were we? That was, you guys just got a free live pipe dream hook video. Now no one that's watching this is going to watch it on the after, and I'm going to lose view time. It's going to be awful. How does it appear to Azure Cinnamon? I haven't had Azure Cinnamon. I've had Azure Viva La Horchata. Solid flavor. Big fan. Um, I think the Viva La Horchata might be a little sweeter. A little more cakey. Three hour drive from Vegas? I'm jealous of you. Although I do have a four hour drive to um, to Chicago. Which there's a very good meetup in Chicago for any of you wondering about what goes on there. So everybody, is anyone smoking? Is anyone doing anything? Because that... that pretty much wraps up the bulk of this technical difficulties that, that covered everything I needed to cover. My twin, how are you doing today? What's going on, Tommy? I'm doing well, man. I'm just hanging out. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, you just missed the bulk of the the, uh, the 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 broadcast. Honestly, technical difficulties. We went over the Tangiers pack. Uh, I know Matt was interested to see it. I didn't see Matt in the chat, but I'm sure he'll watch us after the fact and go, "Oh, you packed Tangiers wrong." And then we're getting into an argument next Monday for the AM Hookah podcast. Which, by the way, Frank is coming on. Not Frank the Tank, but Frank of THL. Come check it out. I, I'll watch. I always catch something new each time I watch a vid. Hey, man, I appreciate it. God knows I need the watch time. Um, I like live vids. Yeah, me too. Live vids are nice because you can, like, interact. And then I mean, you're not sitting in a room talking to a camera by yourself, which is actually what I'm doing. But there's other humans that I can, like, talk to and, like, share opinions and receive opinions and ideas from, which I think is a very interesting thing. That's why we do the podcast, actually. It's um, it's, it's more fulfilling in a way. My personal channel is a passion project. I love doing it. Um, the last video I did, I worked pretty hard on it. If you haven't caught it, go check it out. It's um, it's a review on the cheapest two guy on Amazon. And if you know me, you know what direction that video went in. It is Frank's hair. I do apologize. <laughs> I'm just waiting to get off work so I can go smoke now. Yeah, it's almost time, I would imagine. It's 8 for me. So if you're in... Where did you say you were from? SoCal, is that correct? That would mean it is 5.51 for you, which is... You can't be too long. My wife loves Tangiers for child. It's the only Tangiers she smokes. It's a shame there's a lot of good Tangiers flavors, but it's a good one to like if that's going to be the only one you like. And damn, I was closing a deal. Make that money, Tommy. Don't worry about me. We're here three days a week. What'd you guys think of the uh, live review? That's basically how it happens. Except for when I cut reviews in front of this camera, um, I fuck up a lot and I like have to edit it for like 25 minutes. But it looks pretty good. That was a shit hookah show. I don't want to hide that. I agree completely. Um, it was not a very good hookah. Uh, now that I'm not playing the character, I was playing in that video. Um, I can just openly say that that was honestly just for it wasn't so much for you guys who know what's going on It's for people. There's a stigma around who can I think it's a damn shame that it's something that college students do after they're like done At the club and then they go to a gas station pick up a shitty hookah smoke it think they're doing something great And really it's it's not how this hobby is meant to be enjoyed because this hobby has depth it is just we're all here for the same reason. I don't need to explain why hookah is so great. But um, obviously smoking is smoking and you should be an adult and make that decision on your own. Children should not smoke. If you're a child and you're watching this, get the fuck off. Your mom doesn't want you watching this. Please go away. We don't want watch time from kids. Leave. But all of us adults here, we are all um, allowed to do this. And we should remain allowed to do this. So that was kind of a uh, just a PSA for people who were like buying shitty hookahs. That link I left in the description of that video was to a Matt Pair, no, not Matt Pair, sorry, KM single pair hookah, 80 bucks, full setup, gorgeous. You're going to want to replace the hose at some point, but out of the box, that thing's going to give you a good four to six months of beautiful sessions before you even have to replace the hose. And you guys already know that, though. Like, we're all on the same page. Um, by the way, Maggie, I don't know if I can talk about this, that you're doing the thing, but I'm getting a thing off Maggie Salter. The Salters over here are up to some up to no good. This sweet, um, a sweet thing that was woven, I believe, or crochet. I don't know what you call it, but I've got this base 
base mat that I use. And I know there's these drawstrings so you can wrap it around, but I like to use it as a flat base mat. It's my favorite color, uh, which is purple, and the black really helps accentuate the color. I think it's beautiful. But um, I like shit like this. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big fan. What do you think about California trying to ban flavored tobacco? I think it's garbage. California is the hub. We should all respect California. It's where all the innovators move to. It's where everyone who's doing something is. We need to protect California. There's a petition out. George Johnson, a real started it. Go sign it. All you have to do is go into any of the hookah Facebook groups, and you will see it. There's a certain science in hookah, and it's, yeah, hookah is, you, it, it is what you put into it, and that's another really cool thing about hookah that I don't think people appreciate nearly enough. Um, you can really just, however complex you want to make it, it will keep right up with you in being that complex, which is just wonderful. I'm the sweetest, I mean... Uh, Everyone that knows me personally would disagree, but I appreciate it. Thank you. I've never watched much reviews. I like the live, though. Yeah, you know, you make tobacco, so you probably wouldn't have anything. There's nothing in reviews for you if you're smoking your own tobacco. But if you enjoy these lives, Robert, thank you so much for hanging. Um, it's really interesting that so many people from so many different places in the world want to watch this. And I wish that we weren't... It's going to seem weird because, oh, I want competition. But I wish that we were the only people doing it on this scale. Because... The thing that sucks about this is I love this type of content, but you don't want to sit there and watch yourself do it. That's really boring and kind of narcissistic. And, um, you know, I wish we had other people that wanted to do it. It's kind of, if you're trying to make money or something, it's hard to scale to that point. Like, our goal is to eventually be able to make enough money to cover the cost of operations. So we're at least breaking even. Right now, we do put money into this. Um, but, you know, the goal is to break even. We're thinking about, what do you guys think about a Patreon? We're thinking about doing a Patreon, but um, <clears throat> it's still in the works. We don't 100% know if you want to do it. We're selling merch, but you know, not everyone wants to buy a t-shirt. I don't buy everyone's t-shirt. But uh, right now, we're just we're in the thick of trying to make the content as good as possible before we even think about trying to find a real way to monetize this in any way. Um, but I really wish other people did it too, even though I know it's not really sustainable for most people or even worth their time, and I get that. Really? Alpha Comma is better in Jordan? I didn't know that. That's real, That's fascinating. I didn't know that they, they, they must make different flavor profiles for different places. I would imagine that that is the case. How oh, strange. This flavor is very good. I would highly recommend it. It's performing beautifully. If you don't know how to pack tangiers, or maybe like you do know how to pack tangiers, but you're looking for something a little different, try that pack method. Um, the only thing that I would change if you're not doing it for camera, I did want to make it nice and even with my thumb just for the cuteness and the kui factor, the dis and dis and kui, to make it cute for you guys. But you don't need to. Just clean up the rim and foil it. It's going to perform functionally the same. Um, any questions? Anyone got anything they want to talk about really quick? I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to do for this, uh, this little live. Uh, I, I think I got everything, all my all my uh, check marks have been checked off. I think I am ready to go move on with the rest of my night. And it's Friday, so I'm sure you guys got shit to do. But like, smoke your own hookahs and go watch Pipe Dream Hookah Reviews, am I right? Not Alpha Kama, but the flavor, Fakafina, I never had it. Uh... Falsaria makes one look it look it up. Okay, yeah, I definitely will check that out. I want to, and Alpha Fina is better there. I don't know anything about it. I've never had it. I definitely I'm gonna look it up for sure. That sounds great. By the way, Rami, doing this live, I'm sure I've done it a billion times, but um, being able to make content at this volume because I purchased most of my own product. Um, just being able to like release a bunch of videos in one week because it's not sustainable to like buy you know kilos of tobacco um, on a monthly basis just to review you know because I've got flavors I like that I keep in stock and then I buy flavors that I know I'm only going to review but I still need to get at least a 250 for testing purposes so what you did there it helped the channel out quite a bit um, I usually don't work with sponsored anything because it causes biasms but Rami has been nothing but a pleasure to work with so if you're in California near Yucca Valley go check out High Desert Smoke That's what's great about YouTube, Robert. 
you can put whatever you want up there, and someone will watch it. People are into everything. It's a big fucking world full of 9 billion people. You guys, that's going to about do it for this, this little live stream, technical difficulties. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you later. Maggie, I'll contact you later. Tell Kenneth, if he's not still here, that I said hi. Kenneth, if you're not still here, hi. And tell Maggie I said hi. Either way. Everyone, hi. That said, bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, hey, as always, happy smoking.